Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, we're, we're going to uh, start this off with uh, a, a little bit of fantasy. Okay, I'm going to be a, a Gartner analyst for another couple of minutes, and I'm going to pretend to be someone else. And uh, then we're going to see uh, what these uh, four lovely vendors have got to, to say about that, that, that product. My name is Eric Lapeer. I am uh, with Hewlett Packard. I run the uh, worldwide technical marketing organization within the HP Network. My name is Chezal Merchant. I'm uh, Vice President for Technology at Extreme Networks. I'm John McHugh, the Chief Marketing Officer for Brocade Communications. And Douglas Corlea, Vice President at Arista Networks. I've also uh, invited two consultants to, uh, to help me uh, with this, and uh, maybe uh, you two consultants could introduce yourselves, please. Consultant number one, uh, Michael Barnes, I'm uh, Vice President Research Director of Forest Research. One, I'm uh, consultant number two, uh, <laughs> Dylan, <laughs> Ability and Enterprise in Nature Bank, IDC. I'm a CIO of this multinational company, and uh, we've got three data centers, and they're in three different continents. And I am over here, okay, I, I'm late adopting. Um, in fact, I really like my, uh, my, like my data centre. It's, uh, it's very old fashioned, but uh, you know, it works. And I'm a great believer in uh, if, it, if, it, if it isn't broke, then don't try and fix it. And if the CEO says, hey, where's our data from our, from our uh, mission critical SQL application? I can actually take him along and uh, into the room and show him and say, hey, it's in that box there and that box there. And uh, he's happy because he knows everything is safe. I've been having trouble lately in that, uh, you know, I needed to uh, increase my budget for operating my data center for next year. And I'm getting some pushback from the, uh, from the CFO. He says, look, this is just too expensive. We're, we're spending too much, money, too much money every year on uh, just keeping this data centre going, is there something you can do to, uh, to reduce the price? And my CEO keeps asking me, hey, what new technologies are you adopting here? And I go, new technology? Well, none. But I, I think it's time I ought to, to start looking at it. So uh, as any sensible CEO, I uh, go and uh, ask a Gartner about I certainly want to learn more about virtualization. So. Uh, so I've invited uh, four uh, vendors to come along and uh, tell me what, uh, what I should do and really why I, you know, I might well invest in their, in their products for a solution. So I've invited them along and uh, they're going to sort of give me a pitch of a few minutes each to, uh, to tell me uh, what they do and, uh, and, and why I, I really ought to invest uh, my money in, in a solution from them. The company that we're talking to today is one it sounds like for IT, it's not very relevant to his business. Because if the CIO is being asked to be pressured for cost reductions, and the CEO is asking about point technology, it's not a company where IT is creating significant competitive advantage and differentiated value for the business. At Arista, where we focus, is on companies where IT is mission critical, and IT creates business advantage and value. You're going to hear people talk about the word fabric. Fabric means proprietary. Ask anybody who says, we build a fabric. If you can replace any component of that fabric with somebody else's product, will it work? And if it does, great, it's open. Networks were based on open standards and interoperability, not proprietary technologies. That's why we focus on networks and not fabrics. We jointly developed a technology with VMware called VXLAN. It enables us to put any virtual machine on any server, anywhere in your network, in seconds, in software. And not, and not be worried about upgrading or forklifting your network to do it, or changing the network architecture. Lastly, um, what it says is you don't need a large flat layer to network. Smart network engineers don't build them and don't want them. Ask any of the largest cloud computing and largest network operators in the world, do they want a large flat layer to network? And the answer is no. They stick with networking technologies that work and scale. The 
and that's what's needed to build a reliable infrastructure to meet the CEO's expectation of service uptime and his applications available. If you want maximum uptime, keep your network simple. Focus on network operations. At uh, Rocade, our networks are like our presentation, faster than Arista. So I won't lie. <laughs> <laughs> um, Ian, you have a great opportunity, but you have challenges. As you, are, as a late adopter, are looking at virtualization today, trying to question why you would want to embrace it, the answer is very simple. The problem that you get into when you make this correct business choice is that you find that the network that is installed in your data center is fundamentally ill-equipped to be able to handle the changes that virtualization bring in terms of traffic flows around the network. And additionally, these networks that are in data centers are classic three-tier architecture with rigid topology. They were not designed for a world where applications move from one device to another, which you're going to want to do for maintenance cycles, for capacity and loading, and various other reasons. First of all, I'd like to build a fabric because I can get rid of one of those aggregation devices that is absolutely being wasted simply providing redundancy. There is significant power savings immediately just by getting rid of that piece of the network. Next, because I'm building a fabric, it's active-active and it integrates traffic flows, I'm going to get rid of most of your aggregation layer and ultimately consolidate even your edge layer into this universal touch point for all the assets in your data center. In most cases, we'll take 20 to 30 percent of the running network devices switching and crowding devices out of your uh, data center. Once again, providing more cost uh, and operational savings. When you deploy VMs, you also get the benefit of having the VM configuration replicated throughout this with a zero-touch discovery model, model so that when your VMs move, frankly, the network doesn't need to change. It already knows how to anticipate that behavior. With that, I'll um, look forward to See my uh, competitors challenge that. So let's let's take a quick look at some of the business drivers. We jump into technology in a little bit, but as Mr. C. I mentioned over here, it really is about doing more with less. That's the mantra of today. How do I lower my costs and at the same time keeping my costs contained, increase reliability, right? Because more and more applications are moving to the cloud, which means the cloud has to be reliable, very reliable. At the same time. You want to make sure that your application performance also increases because as John mentioned, there is more and more east-west traffic which drives greater and greater performance requirements. So you have to lower costs, you have to increase resiliency, you have to increase application performance and provide better manageability. Right? So these are some key business drivers. In the data center traditionally, you had uh, different technologies. You had fiber channel for storage, uh, Ethernet for your LAN, and uh, Infinity Band for high performance computing. What we're seeing today is everything's converging to Ethernet. Right? Storage is moving to Ethernet. In fact, a large chunk of it has moved to Ethernet. Right? High performance computing is also moving to Ethernet. And, and the LAN is just getting faster and better. Flatter networks are better. Uh, provides for better uh, east-west traffic. It's optimized for east-west traffic. Active-active resiliency, which means that at any given point, all active paths are utilized in your data center. If any path fails, you need to recover, preferably in less than 15 uh, milliseconds. High density 10 gig and 40 gig, this is happening today. Servers are migrating to 10 gig, which means the core and the aggregation is moving to 40 gig. These are all key nuggets, but the most important one right, is an open infrastructure. Right? I, I completely echo the sentiment earlier, is you cannot get tied into a proprietary infrastructure. Right? You cannot get tied into a proprietary end-to-end -end architecture because if you replace one component of that, you have to replace an entire infrastructure. It speaks against the mantra number one, which is lower cost. So what that drives us to is open fabrics. Right? It's a fabric architecture, right? And, and a fabric architecture is becoming important because it collapses the tiers, it provides for east-west traffic uh, patterns, it's very high capacity, but it's got to be open. And that's what we built over here. Uh, it sounds like your business is changing quite a bit, and uh, we want to make sure that you're comfortable, uh, that HP can help get you, uh, get you to the future. And uh, innovation is absolutely one of the key factors. I think that uh, it sounds like uh, you've been kind of stuck in the past a bit. Um, so innovation is certainly something uh, that can help you uh, move ahead. 
So HP strat data center strategy for enterprises and, and, and for the cloud is something called converged infrastructure, something that we call the uh, flex network architecture. And this is really the industry's only converged architecture that, that really spans from the data center uh, to the campus and to the branch. There's the, the different elements of the architecture, but the one that I want to highlight uh, as we look at, we're here today to talk more about data center is the flex fabric uh, architecture. And this really provides the framework to address the business issues that you're going to be encountering. So things like mass, you know, big data, things like a massive move to virtualization, and also different types of cloud deployment models. So th this architecture will help you do that. And lastly, openness. Uh, we realize you know, there's a lot of pillars that the Flex Fabric is built on, but one that I'll highlight is openness. Uh, certainly, you've probably purchased other vendors' infrastructure equipment, and we realize that. And uh, so we are looking to help work with you uh, to make sure that interoperability is not a problem as you look to transition uh, some parts of the network possibly to uh, Hewlett Packard. So I'm happy to discuss this further with you, but as your technology partner, really your business partner, I think we can help you as the CIO uh, keep your CEO happy. Okay, well, uh, now I'm confused. Uh, well, what do I do? It, uh, one of the things well, he has plenty more questions to put to his panel. I've got to think about lowering my uh, carbon footprint and also, you know, these energy costs are getting, they're, they're getting higher and higher. And, uh, so, uh, uh, am I really going to uh, gain anything in terms of energy consumption here with uh, any of your solutions? So, does this mean that I can keep some of my old Cisco boxes and everything's going to work fine? You can say quite a typical, traditional, cross fuel CIO set his ways, uh, but he's smart enough to recognize, uh, to your point, that there's a lot of uh, uh, young, hungry professionals within this organization that, that are trying to change. Why do I need any of you? Because the CEO is telling Ian that he can get a better cost saving by putting his infrastructure and applications into the cloud. He doesn't need the data center. So you do well to download the transcript of the entire session, plus the PowerPoint presentations. They're all free, they're packed with vital information and advice, and they're all available now from the NetEvents website. And so, who do you think won the contract?